Preston on Sunday. Hello, welcome to Preston on Sunday, your weekly political commentary show featuring me, Robert Preston. Uh, I'm joined this week for a post general election special, and I'm joined by Charlotte Leonard and Aaron Holmes. Thank you both for joining us. So, can we start by asking you how you both voted last Thursday? Yes, I voted Conservative. And Aaron? Uh, Labour. And I voted for the Lib Dems, even though I am a Labour supporter. But I was voting mm -hmm. tactically, of course, to keep uh, our local Tom break in the position that he's in. So, who could have predicted where we are? Um, we now have Theresa May winning, but not by a majority, and seeking an alliance with the DUP. Uh, had you even heard of the DUP until the other day? Um, I knew that there was, uh, you know, two parties in uh, in Northern Ireland, but mm -hmm. I don't know too much about them. No, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't have a clue. No, I didn't. No. And uh, how how do we feel about uh, the possibility <laughs> of? this happening now. Um, is it even going to happen? I expect it will happen. Um, I am obviously disappointed by the election result. Mm -hmm. I think the Tories have, um, the Tory campaign has a lot to answer for. Um, I think we ran a terrible negative campaign. I don't think we put forward our vision for this country. Mm -hmm. I don't think we engaged with the Labour manifesto and policies and we could have actually debated them and tried to show why that's not the right direction for the country. Do you think Theresa May should have taken part in the TV debate? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. She should have done. Yeah, yeah by, not, by not taking part in the debates, she let Corbyn off the hook. Right. Yeah, it, it was, they tried to play it too safe because you can see why they, they thought that they could only lose and they would, they would be ganged up on by the other parties, but by playing it so safe and taking the electorate for granted and then doing things like putting fox hunting on the manifesto, it just looks like you're not really trying yeah. very hard. So I'm not surprised they've been given a, a bloody nose in the end. And the, uh, their manifesto was uncosted, whereas Labour's was. It was costed, whether you believe that they could have done everything that they said that they would do. Did I mean, their costings were, well, no, their costings were proved to not really be true. And I agree, the Tory manifesto wasn't costed. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean you take everything the Labour Party put in their manifesto as gospel. Because the IFS already said that that was not correct. No, but the point is that you're, you're, it's, the electorate have got to decide between two manifestos, and one of them it doesn't have costings. Yeah, and and, and that's yeah. being presented by a party that's, that's uh, trying to call out the other lot for uh, being bad on numbers. No, I agree. You can't attack the Labour Party for costing their manifesto when you don't cost your own. It was a terrible campaign and now it's been terrible for the country. And let's talk about the others. The Lib Dems um, are pretty much finished now. Nick Clegg has... Well, they, they've gained four. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nick, Nick Clegg has uh, uh, lost out big time. Um, he, he's lost his seat that he's held for decades, I think. Um, I... I personally think that's a shame. They went, they went so, you know, but uh, in my view, they've, you know, they, it seemed like a good idea to um, go with the 48% of Remain voters. Um, but it has turned out that uh, the majority of people in this country are, are Democrats before they are anything else. Mm. And, um, you know, they, yeah, um, the, it was, it, I don't know, it, was, it seemed a bit opportunistic from the, from the Lib Dems there. Mm. You know, just a bit. As Theresa May's call in this election, it seemed opportunistic. They saw that the polls were so low, they thought they'd go for the kill. And um, when they really should have been uh, focusing on give, doing the Brexit, which the Tories told us they were going to do. And now we've had um, Cameron legged it, and now uh, Theresa May was supposed to get on with it, and she called an election. Now, now we are where we are. Do you think um, there is a possibility that she called the election hoping that she would fail and wouldn't no. have no. to be. No, no, I really, really don't think that's the case. No, no. I don't think I think do they that. Um, were arrogant and I think they could just win without going out to the electorate, without having an actual manifesto um, that, as you say, was fully costed and actually delivered a vision which was what people wanted and it's what the Labour Party did. Obviously, as a Conservative voter, I don't agree with that vision. I don't think it would be good for the country. In fact, I think it would be quite disastrous for the country. But you can't argue the fact that the Labour Party did do that. They ran a good campaign. 
Yeah. Well, they, um, it, I think it's true to say that they actually took a lot of um, votes from former UKIP voters. Yeah, because they, they backed the referendum result. They needed to because yeah. their vote was split between Leavers and, and Remainers. They, they, they managed somehow to um, straddle both and, 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 and please the others by, I don't know... Um, to me, their position on Brexit is not that much different other than they're saying they're going to approach it with smiles rather than scowls, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> and so UKIP, let's just talk about UKIP. They're finished now. Um, Nuttall has resigned. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you, uh, Well, I know that you did stay up and watch the election results. Was you uh, watching the BBC version or...? One of the others. I think we skipped. We, I think went, we moved around, spread the love. Guy. What did yeah. you see Farage turn up uh, on the BBC and um, give his uh, two pence worth? I, he, no, he, he, didn't, he didn't blame Nuttall. Did no, he? no, he didn't. He no. did. Although but, Nuttall's terrible. But he's likely <laughs> to come back now, Farage. Well, yeah, but he's not a, he's not a politician. Now. He's not an MP anymore. He's... No, but it's only to lead the UK, that he's only looking to lead UKIP. I mean, they've got no MPs, have they? You know. Well, no. No. Yeah, and they've got the Brexit out. referendum without that too. Because when both parties are saying they're going to follow through with the result, they're not left with. They're only left with either people who are, um, don't trust the two parties, or or, or Nuttall's gone on a, a pretty sort of um, hardline anti-Islamic fundamentalism sort of ticket, and he's gone for the people who respond to that. That's all. He, he didn't seem to. That was the main focus of the UKIP campaign this time mm. and um, so the narrative that really the UK anywhere. is this racist country and that's why everyone voted Brexit has pretty much been destroyed now yeah basically <laughs> so uh, in the coming week um, uh, talks are being extended we're, we're going to be without a government as it mm -hmm. were for, for a little bit longer well no We've still got a Prime Minister and well, Theresa yeah, we've still got a yes. civil service and there's people well, well yes I know but we um, I mean, the Conservative Party won. Yeah, they've still they, won. Not in the way they wanted to. No, no. But they only the Labour made... Party also needed to accept that they absolutely did not win. But they have to form this alliance. They have to come to an agreement with... They don't have to form an alliance as such. They just have to get them to vote through, which means some sweeties. It's just what the, yeah. what the sweets are going to be. What are this, what the, what's the flavour? <laughs> that's the thing. I mean, uh, the, the DUP are going to want... Um... We don't know what they're going to want. We, you, we, we, know, we, we have some idea what they might want, but... Well, they want creation. Creationism sort of... I don't think they're going to expect to get that. that. No. They're not stupid, are they? This is not what they're going to be asking for. No, they want access to the. They want the the single market to has to, to be in it. I know they want that, mm -hmm. but I don't, I don't think they're gonna. Yeah, I don't, it's it's yeah. I, I couldn't predict what they're going to be offered. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. It might, we might be going back for an election within a, a few months, for all we know. And I would much rather do that. Have you do you, do you remember in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, when uh, the, the sheriff of Nottingham brought in the Celts to to go in and and storm uh, Robin Hood's. Um, village in the, he, the tree village that he built in Sherwood. Yes. That that worked out quite well for them because they went in and they decimated the uh, the entire village and left only a handful of survivors. And of course, in Braveheart, um, <laughs> King King de Longshanks, he famously brought, he brought in the Irish army and used them as fodder to go in, but they turned on him. And they, they allied themselves with the Scottish. Although I'm given to understand that was actually historically inaccurate as much of the film was. <laughs> and that right. in reality, the Irish did fight with the Scots. So, is that where we are now? No, look, just... the DUP are, 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 are Eurosceptic, remember that. Mm. So they might, they might prefer to just go like this for, for a while. Just vote with them, um, maybe... Maybe kick up a fuss later about some stuff. I don't know. They they are Eurosceptic as far as I understand it. So let's talk about Scotland for a bit because um, that was the big surprise of the night for me was the amount of Conservative, the amount of blue all over that that part of Scotland. I don't think it's a surprise. I think Scotland's made it quite clear that they're not up for a second independence referendum. Mm. They had one. They were told that's the only one that they're going to have in their lifetime, and now suddenly the SNP are saying, "Oh no, we're going to have another one." And people are not up for it. I think she, she, they might have voted to remain in the EU. Does it mean then they want to vote to leave the United Kingdom, as Nicola said, and is trying to make out? Ruth Davidson's 
a pretty good politician yeah. for the Scottish Conservatives as well. I think. Well, yeah, she's be been awesome. a formidable opponent for Sturgeon up there. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to be hearing help. more from her in the. Uh, yeah, I think she's the got a future for the Tories. Isn't it? Yeah, I think she does. So, do you think there's a possibility uh, in that the, the do we think the UK is going to stay together? Yes. Yes. Because there there was a danger uh, about a year ago. It looked like um, we were going to when it came, but when when the independence referendum, but uh, the question still is not answered. What what are you going to do with your currency? You, the UK are not going to you either get your own or you join the EU and you join the euro. Is, is there an appetite for that in Scotland? I don't think. I'm not sure there is. No. I don't know. I don't know. I might be wrong. I'm not against no, Scottish independence. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm not against it. But but there are questions that they have to answer. You know, are they ready for that? I don't know. That's my view. Yeah. One hell of a mess, really, isn't it? The whole thing. It um, is a mess. Yeah. Who do you, who do we think will be prime minister on Christmas Day this year? <laughs> um. Um, if I'd want someone as Prime Minister... Because let's, let's be clear. That's what's fun about politics at the moment, it's pretty unpredictable. Oh, I am. <laughs> Obviously don't want Jeremy Corbyn to no, be who, who Prime do you Minister. think it will be? Because... It won't I, be Theresa May. I think it... Yeah, I don't think so. It might be. It might be. You don't know, the Tories might fall in line. They might. There's going to be... They will for now. There is going to be another election this year. I, I think there will be. I think there should be. Around October, some of my friends in the Labour Party are saying. Um, yeah, and as a Tory vote, I completely want another election and I want us to run it properly, do a proper campaign, a proper manifesto, debate Jeremy Corbyn and his politics, show why that's not good for the country and get him out of the picture. Do you know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see them have Keir Starmer and David Davis get together and work on the work on the Brexit negotiations. But I know it's not going to happen, yeah. but that would be, you know... I, I, I think they're both, you know, good for it. Interesting. Yeah. But there needs to be another election and there needs to be actual conversations, not just the Tory party thinking they can win it without doing anything properly. Because we let the Labour Party off the hook. Yeah. Corbyn did well as well, though. But yeah. He did, yeah, he did well. But definitely the Tory. Anyway, that was yeah, but he didn't do that That's well because he got lost, time for. Um, even thank though the you. Tory party ran an awful campaign. We, we are running out of time. Uh, thank you very much <laughs> to Charlotte Leonard and Aaron Holmes. Uh, and 